This was Germany, a beautiful country. A historic country. prosperous country. A modern country. The German people, a clean and tidy people. An educated people. A musical people. people look all right. The mailman, the farmer, the cop. They all look pretty much like the folks back home. Holding down jobs, raising families, enjoying life. They certainly look like the kind of people we can understand. Or can we? A quiet, decent people who prepared 20 years to bring war into the world? A religious people who burn churches, imprison ministers, persecute the faithful, a kindly people who accept blood purges, pogroms, concentration camps, a gentle people who torture, starve, exterminate. These were men. They died in German concentration camps. They did not quite die. These bones were men, women, and children sent to be exterminated in a German death factory. This is a scientifically designed gas chamber. This a furnace for burning the corpses. This the clothing of the victims, which the Germans methodically salvaged. 
These the children's toys, carefully collected for the use of German children. These are objects of art made by German guards. Objects of art made of human skin. These were Poles, murdered by the Germans before they left Lublin. These were Italians, murdered by the Germans before they left Rome. These were Belgians, murdered by the Germans before they left Bandai. These were Americans, defenseless prisoners of war, murdered by the Germans near Malmedy. These are some of the reasons why the German farmer and the German mailman and the German cop can't be quite like the people back home. That's why we've got to look a little deeper into the German character. The character of a people who plunged the world into two wars in one generation and each time claimed that they were victims of attack. That's the puzzle we've got to solve if we're to save our children from a third war. The puzzle of that clean, industrious people, fond of kids, fond of music, fond of tyranny, fond of aggression, fond of gas chambers. What gave the Germans that character? What makes them think, act, feel this way? Hitler would have answered, German blood. We don't take so hopeless a view. Too many of our friends and neighbors have had German blood. That same blood that we have seen in great Americans. For what makes an American is not any special precious sort of blood, but the tradition we have inherited. It's tradition, not blood, that patterns the way we think and act and feel. Our ancestors came here to escape tyranny. That's part of the American tradition. That's why no American can believe in any government that is not of the people, by the people, and for the people. They came to be able to pray in any way they wanted, or in any church they wanted. That's why freedom of religion is part of our tradition. In school, we learned that none of us is any better than any other American, or anybody else in the world for that matter. That there is no privileged few, that all men have equal rights. That's the tradition we were brought up in, at home, at school, among our friends, at our jobs. That is the tradition that has made us what we are. Now, what is the tradition that has made this man? How does it differ from ours? That's what we have to find out. These Germans were selected by Nazi cameras as ideal German types. Let's call one of them Carl Schmidt a self-termed member of the master race who goose-stepped his way across an entire continent. His father did the same goose-step and followed the same road of conquest. And the grandfather of Carl Schmidt did the same goose-step and trod the same path of aggression. The same goose-step, the same will of aggression, the same lust for conquest. You knew their leader as Hitler. Your father knew the leader as the Kaiser. Your grandfather remembers Bismarck. You faced the Nazi menace. Your father's generation was threatened by the Huns. In your grandfather's day, there were the Prussians. The Nazis, the Huns, the Prussians. Three different names for three generations of Germans, attempting to inflict their will upon others by force. Three generations following a tradition so different from ours. Let's go back even further and see how this tradition began. 150 years ago, there was no single country called Germany. Instead, a loose conglomeration of 300 little states without a common history, religion, or literature. In America, even at that time, we were living under the democratic constitution we enjoy today. 